Hello and welcome everybody. My name is Elliot and in this video we're going to look at a classic physics puzzle. It's an infinite chain of resistors strung together to form a ladder shape. And the question is to figure out the total effective resistance of the whole ladder. In other words, if you hooked up a battery of voltage V at the left end and measured the current I coming out of it, we want to know the resistance that would show up in Ohm's law for the circuit, V equals I times R. This is a classic problem. So if you've never seen it before, I encourage you to pause the video and think for yourself about how you would approach the solution. But if you're ready, let's go ahead and look at it together. So again, the setup is that we have this infinite ladder of identical resistors. And the question we want to answer is what is the total effective resistance of this whole circuit going to be? I'll assume that you've learned some basics about circuits before. And to understand this problem, we really just need to know the rules for adding resistors in series and in parallel. If we have two resistors, R1 and R2, arranged back to back like this, then they behave the same as if we had a single resistor with the effective resistance, R1 plus R2. We say that these resistors are in series with each other. The reason is that the same current I is flowing through both resistors. And so the total voltage drop, V equals IR, across the pair of them is IR1 plus IR2, which equals I times R1 plus R2. So as far as Ohm's law is concerned, those two resistors behave the same as one resistor with the combined resistance R1 plus R2. On the other hand, if the two resistors are instead arranged side by side, the rule for combining them is different. Their reciprocals add. We say that these resistors are in parallel with each other. This time, the current across each resistor does not have to be the same. We have some total current I coming in from the top, and then it splits into two currents, I1 and I2, going through the two resistors. But the voltage across each resistor has got to be the same. So the total current I equals I1 plus I2, and I1 is V over R1, and I2 is V over R2. So we get V times the quantity 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, and that thing that multiplies V is 1 over the effective resistance. So the effective resistance is 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, and then we take the inverse of that whole expression. Notice that for identical resistors, when R1 equals R2 equals R, if they're in series, we get an effective resistance of 2R, and if they're in parallel, we get R over 2. So the effective resistance of two resistors in parallel is smaller than the original resistors, while in series it gets larger. Now, back in our problem, we really just have a bunch of resistors combined up in series and in parallel with each other, to form this infinite ladder shape. And we want to answer the same question as we just did for those little two resistor combinations. Namely, what is the total effective resistance of the whole chain? Well, first of all, what do we roughly expect to get? These two resistors at the far left of the ladder are in series with the rest of the circuit off to the right. And what we have inside that box is this third resistor R that's in parallel with everything else. Since they're in parallel, that whole box is going to contribute something with resistance less than R. And when we combine that with these first two resistors in series, we're going to get a total effective resistance that's somewhere between 2R and 3R. So now let's go compute it. When I look at this problem, my first inclination is to think iteratively. We can think of the latter as being built up out of these little three resistor blocks like Legos. Then we can ask what happens when we have one block, or two blocks, or three blocks strung together. Well, one block is very simple, of course. We just have three identical resistors connected in series. And so the total resistance is 3R. But now what about two blocks? Well, this looks a little bit more complicated. It helps to bend the wires around to make the circuit look like a more straightforward arrangement of series and parallel resistors. If you imagine starting at this blue node in the top left, Let's bend that wire so that we come down through that first top left resistor. Then we hit this red junction. You can turn right and go through these three resistors, or you can turn left and go through just one resistor. Then those two paths join up together again at this purple node. And finally, you go off to the green node by passing through this last resistor. Now that looks a little more straightforward. We've got these three resistors here in series again. That gives us three R. And then that 3R resistance is in parallel with a single resistor R on the left. So to put those together, we take 1 over R plus 1 over 3R, and then we flip it over. 
one plus a third, that's four thirds. So when I flip it over, I get three quarters R. And then finally, we combine that three quarters R with the other two resistors on the top and bottom. So that's R plus three quarters R plus R, which is 11 quarters R. All right, so we've got one block and two blocks down pat. But how do we get from two all the way to infinity? Well, let's let R sub N denote the effective resistance of an N block ladder. So in other words, what we found so far is R sub one equals three R and R sub two equals 11 quarters R. What if we go to three blocks? Instead of trying to compute that resistance from scratch, let's think about understanding it by adding this third block onto the left of our previous two block circuit. It puts that two block circuit in parallel with a single resistor R, and then we add on two more resistors in series with that. That means that we can use what we've already learned to write the resistance of the three block circuit as R from that first resistor, plus the parallel combination of R and R2, the two block resistance we already calculated, plus one more R. So the resistance of the three block circuit, R sub three, is two R plus one over R plus one over R2 inverse. And if you plug in the numbers here, you'll get R3 equals 41 over 15 times R. But we don't actually care too much about those particular fractions. The thing we wanted to notice here is this recursive pattern that lets us write the resistance of the ladder with n blocks in terms of the resistance for the ladder with n minus 1 blocks. So with the same reasoning, we conclude that r sub n equals 2r plus 1 over r plus 1 over r sub n minus 1, all that inverse. This is called a recursion relation, and it tells us how to get our n from our n minus 1. Likewise, we could use it to get r sub n minus 1 in terms of r n minus 2, and so on. And since we know the resistance of a single block, r sub 1, we can use this recursion relation to go from r1 to r2, r2 to r3, r3 to r4, and so on, all the way up to rn. I'll show you the solution to this equation in the notes that I've written up to go along with this video. You can get those for free at the link in the description. But actually, we don't need to know the solution for any n right now. What we're looking for is the resistance of the infinitely long ladder, which means that we want to set n to infinity. But how are we supposed to do that? The key insight is that when you have an infinitely long ladder, you can add one more block to the end and it'll still be infinite. So adding one block doesn't change the total resistance of an infinite ladder. As another way of saying the same thing, if we plug n equals infinity into our recursion relation, we get an equation relating r infinity to r infinity minus 1. But infinity minus 1 is still infinity. So this equation actually relates r infinity to itself. r sub infinity equals 2r plus 1 over r plus 1 over r infinity inverse. If we rearrange this a little bit, we can put it in the form of a standard quadratic equation for the total resistance. r infinity squared minus 2r times r infinity minus 2r squared equals 0. Now we'll just solve this quadratic equation and we'll get the total resistance of our ladder. We've got negative b, which is 2r, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's 4r squared plus 8r squared. All that divided by 2. We're going to choose the plus sign because we want the resistance to be positive. Now we'll divide out that 2, and we're going to get 1 plus the square root of 3 times r. So there it is. That's the resistance of the infinite ladder. Numerically, 1 plus the square root of 3 is about 2.73 which just like we expected is between 2r and 3r. So there we have it. You can try making other infinite ladders by combining different blocks of resistors and apply the same recursive strategy to get the total. Again, if you want to see this written up, you can check out the link to the notes that I wrote up down in the description. While you're down there, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.